Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. We are going to now talk about coordinates of a vector with respect to a basis and change of basis in R2. Once again in R2 this will be very easy to visualize and think and we will write down in very easy ways. Uh, but you know when we generalize it will become a little bit complicated. But this notion of a coordinate of a vector is very important. Okay, So I am going to describe that how we get coordinates with respect to a basis. Okay, So, uh, so what is basis of R2? We know that you know you can have a basis you know AB and CD will be a basis for R2 if they are in different directions that is they have to be linearly independent or AD minus BC is not equal to 0. So, we know any two ABCD you pick like this will be a basis for R2. Okay? There are infinitely many bases this also we know. Okay? One of the most interesting bases for R2 is what is called the canonical basis. The canonical basis the word canon is refers to biblical things and all that. So, basically rules a canonical or standard or accepted basis uh, in some sense, the canonical basis is 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay? And this is the basis, right? The vector 1, 0 is here, what the 0, 1 is here. So, you have a canonical basis. Okay? This is a clearly a basis, no? Different directions. Okay? And th these things happen to be in 90 degrees, so that is also a very nice way to fix a basis. But there are infinitely many bases. This is not the only basis. Here is any other basis, right? So, A, B, C, D, this is also a basis. So, you can pick any number of bases you want. Uh, we saw this before already, but anyway, just to reinforce any A, B, C, D, A, D not equal to B, C is not also a basis. Here, the angle is not quite 90 degrees, but still it is okay. This is also a valid basis, it is not wrong. Okay? Now, the, a vector and its basis coordinates, how, how are they related? How do you define the basis coordinates for a vector? Okay? So, let me start talk about that. So, given any vector v in R2 and a basis u and u2, the vector v can be expressed as a linear combination of u and u2 uniquely. Okay? So, this is very important to understand. Uh, so, so, we know why this is true, right? Because the vector r2 has a basis u and u2, which means r2 is the span of all u and u2, uh, span of u and u2. So, any vector in v r2, I can write as a linear combination of u and u2, right? That is that's how span was defined. Okay? So, this is what it says, but what it also says is uniquely. Okay, when you express v as a linear combination of u and u2, <coughs> you get it uniquely. That is because you know y can be expressed is because basis spans r2. Why is it unique? It is because basis vectors are linearly independent. Okay? So, I leave the proof of the uniqueness as an exercise to you. You, have to, you can do it by contradiction. You assume that you know the same v can be written as expansion of u and u2 in two different ways and then you show actually that two different ways will be the same. Okay? So, the same v uh, the u linear independence condition that you know any linear combination being 0, uh, non-trivial linear combination being uh, 0 uh, also means the coefficients are 0 will tell you that the uniqueness is established. Okay? So, it is a nice proof to write down in case you are interested you can do it, but hopefully you will believe me. Okay? So, if you have a basis any vector can be expressed uniquely in terms of the basis. Now, what is that unique expansion? This v can be written as a u1 plus b u2, b u2 and this uh, a and b are unique, right? Once you define u and u2 and v, a and b are unique. You can't get more than one value. So, the coordinates of v with respect to the basis u and u2 are simply this a and this b. Is that okay? The coordinates of v with respect to the basis u and u2 is a, b. Okay? This is how you write it. In this course at least, you are going to write it as v equals a comma b in basis u and u2. Okay? Very simple, right? The coordinates of a vector are the coefficients of linear combination of the basis vectors, which gives you that vector itself. Okay? So, if basis is not mentioned, quite often we simply write v equals 3, 5 without saying the basis, right? We so far that's how we've been writing, isn't it? We simply wrote v equals 3, 5, 2, 3, 1, 2. We never mentioned basis. When we don't mention basis, we assume canonical basis. When I did not mention basis 3, 5, what do you do? You go according to the canonical basis, right? You move 3 steps on the x direction and 5 steps in the y direction. Why do you do that? Because that is according to the canonical basis. Okay? So, the canonical basis is always assumed when you do not mention the basis explicitly. But that is not the only way to do it. You can have other bases also. Okay? This is a crucial idea. In R2, it may be a little bit trivial, but still you will see as we go forward, being able to use other bases will be a very, very good uh, tool. Uh, for us to exploit. Okay? So, hopefully you see how coordinates of a vector come about. Okay? So, let us see a few examples. These examples are very, very easy to see. Plot the following vectors in the plane. Okay? V equals 1, 2 
in the basis 0, 2, 3, 5. Okay, how does that work? Right, 1, 2, okay, don't be misled into thinking as follows, right? So, for instance, okay, so I have said V equals 1, 2 uh, in basis, okay, what is the basis? 0, 2, 3, 5. Okay, so don't write it as you know 1 here and then 1, 2 here. Is this V? Okay, no wrong. Okay, so this is not V. Why? Because see 1, 2 in this basis, right? So V is actually 1 times 0, 2 plus 2 times 3, 5. Okay, so when you multiply this out, you will get 6, 12. So V in this coordinate system, if you want to do in the canonical basis, in canonical basis. Okay, so you assume these two are in canonical basis. Okay, so V is 6, 12 in canonical basis. You have to go all the way to 6 here, and you have to go all the way to 12 here, cut it here, 6, 12 here, and then that would give you V that will give you V, correct, okay. So hopefully you see how I did the conversion. So if I give you coordinates in any way basis, you can quite easily go to canonical basis, is that okay? Now what about V equals 2 comma 1, here the canonical basis is not mentioned. So this is, the basis is not mentioned. So clearly this is canonical. So 2 comma 1 is canonical, so 2, 1 you can go on X axis and finish it off. You can also have minus 1, 2 in this basis, so you just write what it is, find out what it is in canonical basis, then do it. Is that okay? Simple, simple test to see that you are doing it correctly. So converting coordinates from an arbitrary basis to the canonical basis is very, very easy. What about the reverse? Okay. Supposing I give you a point in canonical basis, how do you find the coordinates in another arbitrary basis? Right. So that seems a little tricky, so we will see that next. This is called change of basis. Okay. So let us say V is C1, C2 in canonical, okay. And let us say V is going to be some XY in the basis U1, A1, A2, U2, B1, B2. <coughs> now the first assumption which I also mentioned in the example is these basis vectors are actually expressed in canonical coordinates. This U1 equals A1, A2 is in canonical, in canonical basis. U2 equals B1, B2 in canonical basis, okay. So that is important, that is sort of understood in this context, okay. So now, so, if you convert from this u1, u2 to canonical, you are going to get v equals x times u1 plus y times u2, right? What is x times u1 plus y times u2? a1x plus b1y, a2x plus b2y, okay? So, v, suppose it was xy in this basis, it is going to be a1x plus b1y, comma a2x plus b2y in the canonical basis. But I already know v is c1, c2 in canonical. So, we get these two equations a1x plus b1y is c1, a2x plus b2y is c2, okay. I hope you understood this logic. So you solve the above linear equation to get xy. If you get xy, you get the coordinates in a new basis, okay. So this is how you start with c1, c2 in canonical and go to xy in the basis u1, u2. So when you are solving a linear equation like this, what you are doing is change of basis. You are changing basis from the canonical c1, c2 to xy which is in the basis a1, a2, b1, b2. Assuming this is a, this is you know a1, b2 minus a2, b1 is not 0. If a1, b2 minus a2, b1 is 0, then you are in a different world. Then you, this does not become a basis, then things go wrong, okay. So this is a basis and you get this kind of picture, okay. So I hope you understood how to do this change of uh, coordinate conversion. So here are a bunch of examples. If you have to find the coordinates of 1, 2 in the following basis, you can set up an equation and solve it. Uh, let me just show you just one case, uh, v equals 1, 2 in uh, canonical to the basis 1, 1, 1 minus 1, okay. So, so if v is x, y in this basis, x plus y has to be 1 and x minus y has to be 2, okay. So, if you add these two, you get 2x equals 3. So, x is 3 by 2. Then, if x is 3 by 2, 
y is going to be minus 1 by 2, ok. So, v in canonical in basis this it becomes 3 by 2 comma minus 1 by 2. Okay, so this is how you do it. I hope this is uh, clear enough. You can you can now repeat it for any other basis. It's easy enough. So here is another problem. You are given v as one two in this basis, and you want to write it in terms of that basis. Okay, how do you do this? Okay, you convert first this into canonical. Once you convert this to canonical, you go to this basis and express it. Okay, so all these problems can be quite easily done. And change of basis is a very very important uh, technique that we will employ later in our understanding of linear algebra. Okay. So, this lecture sort of concludes uh, week 1 in our course. We studied basic ideas in uh, you know vector spaces, subspaces, span, linear combination, basis, spanning set, dimension and change of basis from one to the other in the context of R2 ok. So, we are going to proceed in the next week and study more properties of R2 and in particular linear transformations in R2 and all of that. So, that will be a little bit more exciting and we will do that in the next week. Thank you very much.